My name is Professor Justin Stebbing. I'm a professor of cancer medicine and oncology at Imperial College London. I'm also editor in chief of Oncogene, Spring and Nature's cancer journal. So we are making massive advances in cancer, and cancer in India is an enormous and underestimated problem. And throughout my career, we've typically made advances in knowledge in small steps. So typically, it's been a combination of surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, and hormonal therapy that's led to small overall improvements in survival and an extension of patients' quantity of life and quality of life. Chemotherapy is traditionally associated with side effects such as hair loss, bone marrow suppression, which can lead, lead to infections, vomiting, and feeling unwell and tired, and their late complications such as effects on fertility or the heart. But the good side of chemotherapy is it kills rapidly dividing cells and cells that fail to repair their DNA, and those are the two characteristics of cancer cells. Although many chemotherapy drugs haven't improved, the drugs we give with chemotherapy, such as drugs to prevent vomiting, we call those antiemetics, or drugs to stimulate the bone marrow to produce white cells, such as GCSF, have improved massively. So it's a bit like a car. The car today is very similar to a car 20 years ago, but the security, the air conditioning, the radio is so much better now. But the biggest advance in my entire career thus far has been with immunotherapy. Our own immune systems are performing a biopsy of our own cancers every second of the day. And it's the ultimate in personalized care because it's from our own. And the way these drugs work is they don't stimulate the immune system. They remove a cloak that covers the cancer that stops the immune system recognizing it as an invader. These immunotherapies remove that cloak so the immune system can attack it and eradicate it. They're really well-tolerated drugs. Like any other drugs, they can have side effects, but they're revolutionizing cancer care. At the American Association of Cancer Research two weeks ago, we saw in lung cancer that a combination of chemotherapy and immunotherapy reduced the risk of death in a really common type of lung cancer by over 50%. So things are changing, and they're changing at supersonic speed. Cancer in India is a massive problem, and that's why I'm here to try and help with that. It's estimated that the incidence of cancer, which is the number of new cases per year, is about 1.5 million people, and the prevalence, the number of people living with cancer, is about 3 to 4 million people, but that's a massive underestimate, in my opinion. There were problems in India from treatment, right the way before treatment, to education and awareness. So if we talk about awareness, availability, and affordability. Although there's Modi's excellent government initiatives to promote cancer care, such as Tata Memorial's online oncology tutorials, what we're seeing is late presentations of common cancers. In women, we're seeing cervical and breast cancer. In men, we're seeing head and neck cancers, lung cancers, and gallbladder cancers. Obviously, tobacco and alcohol, and regulating their consumption, Controlling obesity with the increasing urbanization of populations to cities is critically important here because if we can prevent cancers developing in the first place, we don't need to worry about it so much. But ultimately, cancer is still very common. And if I look at where we can make the most difference, for me, it's in the systemic management of malignancies, understanding the whole person via a holistic approach, using a drug-based approach because cancer often affects the whole person at the time of diagnosis. As well as better medicines, such as immunotherapies, we should focus on the patient's psychological and emotional and spiritual well-being, their body image, dealing with side effects such as hair loss, with things like cold caps, and of course a nutritional approach is absolutely critical to all of this. However, when I take a step back and I look across and back through my own career, the thing that's making the most difference to cancer patients and increasing the cure rate and decreasing the death rate and improving patients' quantity and quality of life is better drugs to manage malignancy. Even if we can't cure people, we will hopefully turn it into a long-term disease like diabetes that can be managed, that people can live with for years with a good quality of life as well. 
I think screening is very difficult. There's now data suggesting increasing and better ways to perform population screening. But in India, as mentioned, we have problems that we don't always see in the developed countries. So for example, head and neck cancers and cervical cancer are really important. They're less important in some of the developed countries in terms of the numbers affected and the ages affected. But before screening, there becomes and there should become an increasing awareness of the problem of cancer. In one survey I saw, which was a government-sponsored survey, 55% of women in one area hadn't even heard of breast cancer. I suspect that other women, when diagnosed with breast cancer, don't want to go to the doctor to talk about a breast lump that they've seen. They don't want the financial implications, and they don't want to be a burden for their families. So by the time they come to being treated, it's too late. However, for so many men and women, we can actually turn their cancers into curable diseases with the use of cheap generic drugs supported by the government and various initiatives. Those are not so expensive. And as long as the patients are better informed and aware, which starts at school, perhaps with Mahatma Gandhi's 150th anniversary of his birth next year, that should be part of the curriculum as well because this is a new world we're moving into and a new era where more and more people will develop cancer because ultimately cancer is a disease of age and because of improved hygiene and sanitation, eradication of infections, people are living thankfully longer but it means that cancer is going to become more common. So I would like to personalize medicine here. What that means is giving the right patient with the right cancer, the right treatment at the right time, using a combination of approaches, but according to their own needs, their family's needs, where they live and their affordability, their geographic access to treatments, to try and make the treatment tailor-made around the genetics of the individual and the genetics of the cancer, but keeping in mind the limitations of an individual family and not wanting to burden them as well, with an emphasis on cure, and if we can't cure their cancers, to try and make people live with it as opposed to dying from it, while they retain their economic productivity and overall good health, and they can get on with their lives in the same way people with diabetes can get on with their lives. I think in five years from now, there'll be so many things in India which will be so much better. There'll be much more access and availability to cancer treatments. At the same time, there'll be many more trained oncologists. You already have fabulous doctors here, but at the end of the day, there's only one doctor per 1,500 patients diagnosed with cancer in India, whereas in the Western world, there's about one in 300 to 400. By improving access to healthcare, by increasing awareness, education, and screening, we can then start to treat people with cancer, where cancer doesn't become a stigmatized condition and people aren't scared of chemotherapy. They can understand that these drugs and these medical systems treating, can treat them as holistic, whole individuals, looking after their psychological and nutritional well-being, as well as the physical well-being connected to their cancer. They don't need to be scared of side effects and that we can talk to them and spend time with them, but treat them according to their financial needs and the genetics of themselves and of their cancers themselves. And we'll be performing more and more genetic tests in years to come. Mm -hmm.